Hello everyone. Hello my darlings. Thank you so much for watching this episode, video of Hill Jane Uninhibited. I keep forgetting the name. Can you believe that? I hope you enjoyed my interview with Paris Black and his partner, the lovely Valkyrie Valhalla. I enjoyed this interview and I just want to personally tell you about their OnlyFans. It's a new concept. It is erotica, meaning they get down, but they also will give you advice if you're having a little bit of trouble, if you are wanting to spice things up with you and your partner, they know it all. Val, I just have found to be so informative and so educational, and Paris is, he's down. So check out their OnlyFans, Dr. Venus and Dr. Mars. It's a very new concept, and I personally subscribe to it. Boop. And while I'm at it, will you do me a favor? Won't you be a lamb and click that subscribe button and click that like button? I'll be forever in your debt. Hey, Micah. Now, what were you telling me about coming to um, Chicago? Don't say something you can't get yourself out of. Watch your fingers, baby. You might get burned. Anytime. I would love to. I've never been, and you know, I would absolutely love it. And I'll have my own money to eat on. I'm a healthy girl. I like to eat. No, I would love that. That's awfully sweet of you. I would absolutely love it. I've never been to Chicago. I've never been to Illinois. So I would love it, you know, and I'm really looking for a place after I get my aunt. -aunt I'm really looking for a place to, um, Move to, and I'm gonna go further north. I don't know, it, Illinois is more Midwest. I don't know. Is that north? Maryland, Delaware. Yeah. I, still, I would rather. Um, I would. Chicago, Chicago, Illinois is like a shiny toy. I would love to. There we go. Okay, let's get this party started. Guess you oh my do. God. Oh my God, today. Ambrosia, finally. Oh my Lord. What yes, a disaster. A I can't hear you though. Oh, great. That's really great. Uh, I can't hear you. Uh, I don't know why don't that, know that, is. that is. Can you hear me now? Nope. I can barely hear you. Okay, I can hear you. Um, but we can't hardly hear you. Well, I don't know how why that would be, actually. If I have it as loud as I had it last time, actually. I can't hear a word you're saying. It's just like a barely soft murmur. Uh -huh. um, let me see. Yeah, it's not on my part. Uh, okay. Yes, you do, Micah. You do have me on Twitter. Say something, Paris. See if we can hear you. Something, Paris. Oh, my God. All these pictures just came on here now. All these yeah, it's, ah, it's what's so going soft. on? I, I don't even get what's going on here. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know what to say. Hold I, on. Or something I don't know. Better now. Okay. Well, what I'll a disaster! The, the diva in me was coming out. It was a disaster. No, I. It was hard to get to get things going. I um I think it was because. I don't know. Who knows? I hate Facebook. That's why I'm hardly ever on there. I was just you know. I have. I do all my stuff on Facebook, on but I've got to. I've got to get over to Instagram more. It's uh, it seems better, but I'm hardly I don't have a, hardly have a presence here. So, well, you anyway, gotta, you got to make friends. So, how are you? What's going on? Apparently, you have some big scoop for me for us. What's up? Oh well, um, 
my wife and I have started the uh, www.onlyfans slash Dr. Venus, Dr. Mars page. So where what we kind of content? Work. What's that? What kind of content will you be having? Um, it'll be artistic erotica. It is artistic oh, erotica. Oh. People want to sign up. And it's also, we do advice and things like that. Um, that's cool. Uh, for couples and uh, sort of uh, how to sex stuff and all that. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I actually, when I was married last summer for three hellish months, um, my husband and I were thinking of doing the same thing, having a doctor, a cross between Dr. Ruth and Sally Jesse Raphael. And that, that's something I've always been interested in is a cross between Dr. Ruth and Sally Jesse Raphael. But We'll give a link. Um, keep giving the link. And then we're going to get into some modeling stuff. Okay, I'll put this link here. Okay. Give um, your link to your OnlyFans. And it's good that we're on Instagram because Facebook is so strict about everything, so. Mm -hmm. There we go. <coughs> Dr. Venus, Dr. Mars. Cool. So... The last time we talked, we talked a lot about your music career. So I thought it would be cool mm -hmm. to talk about modeling. So when you were doing sure. music, what? how did you transition from music to modeling, or did you go from modeling to music? Because remember, I'm in America. I don't really know. Uh, which which came first? Because you're tall, you're statuesque, yeah, you've got great chiseled features. Yeah, thanks. Um, so what? Ha thank you. What happened was... Um, I went to New York to be uh, either a boxer or an impersonator. I do lots of impersonations. I don't know whether you, I did them last time I was on the show. Um, like, I want to say the heavyweight championship means everything. Yeah, yeah. Muhammad Ali and different people. So anyway, so I did, that's what I went to New York for. And I was buying a uh, shirt to wear to catch a rising star and in Manhattan. And uh, I had, like, I was crazy. I had, like, $200 or something. I'm, like, 16 years old. I had, like, $200. And uh, I was spending 65 on this shirt to wear a Catch a Rising Star. So, uh, luckily, there was uh, an agent in there from Wilhelmina in the store. And she asked Ooh. me if I, you know, it sounds like, that. It sounds like an ad, to, like, if I considered modeling. And I so I did do, a, do the modeling with her. <laughs> and... Um, it, you know, it sort of has been a career that's kept going for the last 33 years, 34 years. So i um, grateful about that. And so you were with Wilhelmina uh, Models? At first I was with Wilhelmina, yeah. And I was with Elite and I was with um, a place in Toronto called, um, it was Noble Talent, but their, uh, their modeling division was Penny Noble Talent. But the modeling division was called Moda. Motive. I was on that. I was in that one, and I was uh, in South Beach for about ten years. And there was a few places there that I was with. I have them on, on my wall, my comp cards. That's how I remember them. And another place in Toronto called Sherida. And um, you know, it was good. It was good. I mean, and and still, I'm still doing figure modeling, and um, I'll do. You know, if, if good ads come up. And like, a, like the last good ad was for Danish Pastry House. So if good stuff comes up, I'll do it. Uh, so, but you know, there's less demand as you get older. Yeah. Well, I, I approached, um, no, I, I let it be known that I love fur and North American fur auctions contacted me. They represent Black Llama, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a, I, whenever I speak to them, I have to say that it's a, um, I'm not an endorsed, I'm not a monetary endorsed model. I'm goods only. So in other words, they give me stuff to talk about them. Anyway, for those of you, one thing I know about is fashion. So for anyone who's watching who just heard two words, Wilhelmina and Ali. So Wilhelmina is the legendary home of a young lady. She was young, Gia Karanji who was the tragic supermodel, the, the first known woman to have died of AIDS. Elite it was the home, is the home of Linda, Naomi, Christy, Kate, Nikki, mm. all of them. L, I think L. Um, you know, so legendary there. You you had some legendary counterparts. 
Coast well, Guard. I did, you know, I, I was fortunate that it went well. Um, you know, and uh, I was I started very quickly jugg juggling that with my music career, and luckily the two of them have kind of kept me together all these years. I haven't had to do anything else than those two things, but they're both harder. I mean, um, modeling because it's ageist, you know. So there's there's uh, I mean, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, you know, if I were to just get back in the shape I was in like ten years ago, or like a I was one of the top 10 fitness models and top, top 12 fitness models in the world at that time. And if I got back in that shape, it would probably, you know, be even close to as good. But I, I don't know if I'm willing to put that much work into it at the same time as I'm working with the, um, the new songs and everything. It's, life is a balance, you know. And I told you about Marcus Schenkenberg, right? Oh, yes. Yes, you did. Yeah. I looked him up. Thank you very much. Oh my, my God! First, my, my first love, the first male supermodel. My first wow. love. When I first when I first went to New York, that was the first place I went to. Was Boss Models. Gave him some flowers. So, um, you know, we've kept. Well, I'm not going to say we kept in touch, but I've talked to him. I, I was friendly with him for a minute. You know how that kind of thing is. But that was my first love, Marcus hmm. Schenkenberg. Yeah. I like that. Um, that was your first love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. Um, and I, I would love to get him on here, but he. I think he's a cameraman now. Anyway, so what's going on with the music? You got some new music coming out. I uh, got some new music. We we'll can still talk about the modeling, though, if you want. Like, whatever you want to well, talk, about. talk about. The music. We'll get back well, into the modeling. I want to promote your yeah, music. Yeah, the music right now is that I'm I'm still like the last time we talked, still waiting for a couple of mixes. On so, there's a song that I did with this guy that I've admired for many years. There's a number of songs I did with him named Phil Nero. And um, to me, he was the best vocalist I've ever worked with. And I've worked with Celine Dion, and I've worked with Michael Bolton. So this guy's like a, the best vocalist. And um, I did a number of songs with him, and, and we were just finishing some more stuff. And then, you know, really tragically, he died of cancer in, uh, in early May. Okay. So... I had, yeah, I promised him, thank you, I promised him that would be the first single, was the, the one that we had just finished. I'm just waiting to get a proper dance mix of it, because Sony basically can get me onto the dance uh, compilation that goes platinum all the time. So, or, wow. or, or, or goes, not just, I don't think it's platinum anymore. It gets into the top 20 of Billboard anyway. So um, I would like to, you know, I, I want to give them that. And... Um, there's talk of me opening for somebody really big in December, but I'm not allowed to say his name. But uh, if you want my body and you think I'm sexy, come on, baby, come to the show. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, By the way, have you heard your counterpart? Paris Hilton does a killer version of that song. I love it. Just really? You know. Yes. I met her, you know. Really? I, I used love to her. Same manager. <clears throat> I used to have the same manager with her in Italy, in um Milan, my manager there was Giuseppe Bramanti, and uh, he also managed her. And I saw her all the time on these big screens. He had all his clients on the screens in his office in, in Milan, 24 7. He had to be on the screens with them 24 7. And she, along with Lindsay Lohan and a few other people, were on his list of, of people he represented. So I would see her on there all the time. I met her in Toronto at one point. I was supposed to do a film scene with her where some guys buy lottery tickets to be seen in a, uh, a hot tub with model Paris. And so they're obviously thinking Paris Hilton, but then it ends up being me. So that was the, uh, that was the scene we were supposed to do. And we were discussing it to the Toronto Film Festival, like 2007 or something. And then... Um, Maybe 2006, but 2006, 2007. Anyway, could have even been 2008, but at any rate, the movie didn't get made, but we had the discussion, and then I got reacquainted with her through the video screen at my manager's place in Milan. So I know, um, looking at your um, websites and stuff, I know you've done, um, what's it called? The modeling when people are painting? Um, yes. Yeah, I do that a lot. Is, is, has that been lucrative for you? Is that something just to pass well, the time I mean, that you enjoy doing? Or? No, it, honestly, it's uh, it's just 
it's the this it's the descent you know like at the beginning the the fashion stuff was very lucrative and then the fitness stuff after that was lucrative but it was also there was the caveat of, of having to take performance enhancing drugs to stay in that shape all the time which i was like like a crazy crazy shape but it, I, i wasn't necessarily so healthy you know being in that shape so then the next thing i moved to was uh was uh, figurative modeling and i have had some good a good time with it i i got to travel to uh china and model there um italy and model there and um Oh, the Louvre. I, I posed in the Louvre um, for about eight months. Started off uh, with the Masculine Masculine show in uh, Musée d'Orsay, which was amazing. And then I went to the Louvre and posed there for about eight months. So I've had a lot of fun with it. I can't say it's nearly as uh, lucrative as the other stuff, but it's it'll still pay the bills, you know. I did one fashion show. I did one charity fashion show, and there's footage of it on my. Um, Victoria's Secret video on YouTube. Um, I don't know who who found it and sent it to me. Listen, anyway, your work but, is fantastic. You know, your work is fantastic. Like you're like you're you're like really in the pocket as an interviewer, and you've got a lot of pizzazz and showmanship. Like you really deserve to be at the very top. Well, really thank do. you so much, Paris. Thank you. I have to say, as you know, lots of things. You know, lots of things. I'm hearing lots of murmurs. There's no definites. As I and I emailed you about a possible something, but they wanted me and so and so. But I've approached them about me, and there's still a little bit of interest. So, you know, um, we'll see. Um, I do want a, a, a talk show, be it on anything, YouTube. I, and people really like this amateur feel, um, from what I'm gathering. I would just like to go a little notch up and have a little some better lighting, a cute little set. But I can keep it. You know, I'm not going to change. The questions that I ask or anything, you know, I'm already unfiltered, so now it's uninhibited. I want to take more of a, um, a stand on things, like I said in one video, social injustice. I have a platform, and it's time I start using it. And um, for anyone that's watching, just for you, for any of your Canadian fans or friends, if something has happened, if you've been done wrong, if you know something. And you don't feel it's getting done? Come to me, because I have a big mouth. And one thing I know how to do is promote. So, you know, let's please get this. Promote, you know. Please promote the OnlyFans page because that's sort of that's coming from a very weird place, and uh, I feel how very. Weird? Weird. How, how is it weird? How is uh, how is it weird? Oh, it's. Um, It's coming from a place of of trying to make things work in a marriage where. Oh, uh, are you comfortable so talking about like, this? Are you comfortable uh, talking no, about not, this? Not really, but but okay. I mean the well, thing about it is is that I think it's I think it's got really great content. I mean, uh, okay. my wife has been and she has a lot of degrees in degrees in hypnosis and very a lot of different things. And she's been a uh, she's been Doctor Venus for quite a long time. And I guess if you look at my walls, you see that I make a lot of, you know, I do a lot of philosophical. It would be the same thing. So I think that it's be, uh, you know, a very big success, and uh, I'd like people to be, you know, involved with so, it. So, what what the burning question is? Is there sexual activity on this OnlyFans? Uh, yes, there is. But it's it's very it's very very. Uh, let me just see where we are here. There, there she is right now. Hey, Viva. I'm uh, I'm on the air with, uh, with Hillary Jane. Oh wow! <laughs> so there she is right here. Can we get my crystal to him? Jane. Hi. There we go. How are you? Okay. Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm 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 really good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. It's very thoughtful. I think thoughtful you're wonderful. I think you're fabulous. Oh, well, aren't you wonderful? Thank you so much. I truly appreciate that. Thank you so much. I think you guys are great too. I love the pictures you guys take together. 
You know what? So, I'm a huge fan of Andy Warhol and all, all his, you know, big stars like Candy Darling and all them. We even named our cat Joe Alessandro. So I, when I, we see you, I think we're like in an Andy Warhol movie. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'm going to be reviewing that movie, um, Candy Darling, and that's my favorite song. Truly, my all-time favorite song, Candy Says by the Velvet Underground. I love her. I relate with her. And, um, you know, I, and I think that's, I, I think she's, um, needs to get more due than she, than she does. Um, but so we've got the OnlyFans. Tell us the link one more time. Okay. Just tell it to okay. us. www.onlyfans slash doctor dot com. Dot, dot com. Yeah, I've sent it there. Uh, Dr. Venus, Dr. Mars. So let's say that, you know, um, a problematic marriage, they're experiencing some, you know, maybe a drought in sex. What would your advice be if a husband and wife, the, the chemistry, the passion's no longer there? What would your advice be, Paris? And what would your wife's advice be? I'll let her go first. My, okay. my advice? My advice would be to sign up for OnlyFans. We could watch watch us having fun anyway. Um, and other than that, I would say take each other to dinner and and uh, do romantic things. Pretend you're dating. Pretend you're not married any, you know, yet. Go back to the way it was when you were just dating, and start from scratch. I would think. What I would say is. What I would say is, look at first of all when people start having trouble they instantly blame the other person. This is the thing that like we do first. When, when there's a problem, we say, well, it's their fault. Now, in my view, what we should be doing as a loving spouse, some uh, husband or wife, is to say, what could I do better? Your something's a bit better out here. So what I would say is, is go on, you know, check what you're doing and, um, See if you can do better in that relationship. See, see what you can do, you know, the things that your spouse asks you to do. Because the sex doesn't start with the time you get in the bed. It starts from the time you get up in the morning, how you treat each other. It starts throughout the day. It's, you know, don't, don't lose tempers over little things. Um, I, I would say it, you know, just put the other person first and that will... You know, things will work out, but you have to, both people have to put the other person first. It's, it's not the easiest thing, but it can, it can definitely work. So I'm curious what both your advice, again, would be to a man who's having some serious self-doubt, some serious issues because he's very sexually attracted to a special type of woman, a trans woman, and he's not, he's wondering if he's gay. Yeah, he's not attracted to men. He just likes the beautiful, exotic trans women. And he wants to keep it quiet, but the trans woman doesn't want to keep it quiet. What would your advice be to the trans man, or not to the trans man, to the man who is attracted to transsexuals and doesn't know how to deal with it? I'd like to hear from both of you. Huh. Do I still I smart? Say, first, of all, first of all, I would say... I, I, I would say Okay, now this isn't uh, this isn't in a marriage. Obviously, this is in a, a situation where somebody's just just trying to meet somebody, right? I would say that um, you maybe, love a person. Maybe, love he's, a person. maybe he's had sex with her and he likes her, but he doesn't know how to deal with it. He's scared people are going to think he's gay. Well, I mean, uh, first at all, you're breaking so, up. Hold on. What he now? has to examine. Can you hear me? He yeah. has to examine those feelings and understand why it is that he's worried about people thinking he's gay. There's nothing wrong with being gay. If that's if that's the team you're 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 on, that's the team you're on. Um, I think when you fall in love with somebody, you fall in love with them in their entirety. Then... Breaking up again. Still breaking up? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, say it now. So, okay, what I would say is that we fall in love with a person in their entirety. So
so this could be, you know, whatever characteristics a person has, you know, um, you know, my, I would say I have some feminine characteristics. I'm more, I'm very emotional and uh, stuff like that. And my wife is, you know, very matter of fact and practical. Like, so this would be what, um, you know, would be, you know, she's got some more male characteristics, I've got some more female characteristics. But, you know, I love her in her entirety. But if I, you know, was single and I fell in love with somebody that was whatever way that person was, it is whatever it is. You know, like you, you love the entirety of the person. If you're worried about somebody judging you because of what your orientation may be, then you have to really think the person that's judging you is you yourself. You're yourself. You're judging yourself. And the reality is that most people don't care what your orientation is. Most people, most people don't care. Um, you know, some people care, obviously, about transgender and orientation and things like this, but most people don't. Most people just want people to be happy. And um, you're probably they judging yourself be. more than anything else. And, you, and the lovely wife, what does she think? What would she say? Uh, Viva, <laughs> Valkyrie, Dr. Venus. She's, uh, <laughs> she's out of the room right now, she's out of the, uh, this room. So. Well, why are you going to look for her? I want to tell anyone who's watching, um, it, when men are attracted to well, women like me, going. when she'll, men are attracted to transgender women, women they anymore. are not gay. <laughs> they are not gay. And you've got to get, people have to get that and, and notion in their head. They're not gay. And we're not men. So stop right. calling us that and stop calling the guys gay. I have never gone out with a gay guy, knowingly. Well, you know, I, like, I, this labeling of people in, in, in all these different ways, I mean, I, I don't like to be labeled. I don't as anything. I like to be, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. I, I don't like to be labeled anything. I don't like to be labeled as a necessary, you know, I mean, I, obviously I feel I'm a man and obviously I've got, you know, I don't have any problems with that, but I don't, you know, I don't like to be labeled as anything because I feel that human beings are, are so multifaceted. There's... You know, it's it's silly to label people because you're just, you know, you're just judging a book by not its cover, by some some, some writing that's on the cover. It's not it's not the book even. So it's it's um, a big issue in America that that because they 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 like to in America we have to categorize people and you have to be this, you have to be that, and it's a big issue in the United States. And honestly, when I talk to because I have a, a, a lot of a big international audience in Europe, these things just are no big deal at all. And well, this is that's really why I love deal. Europe so much. Hmm? I think they're really not a big deal. I mean, I mean, you are what you are. And, yeah. You know, it, you know, be happy with it. I mean, the main thing you want to be is healthy. The main thing you want to be is healthy. That's the that's the thing. And I think every I to me, I believe that you know, I believe in a very romantic nation of two kind of thing. In a in a monogamous, long lasting relationship, but but I don't think there's anything wrong, you know, from that. And I, um, and we also we also are very thoughtful people, and we will encourage people to learn different techniques and um, to just give their all to their lover. And, and what I say to men is, for me, it's about focus. I only sexually get turned on by my wife. I don't, I don't let my mind wander sexually to anybody else or anything else. So that makes my particular, that makes my, that makes, that's for sure I don't get any ED because of that, you know, because I'm just like, I only sort of, sort of think sexually about my wife. So when I'm presented with the opportunity to ravage her, then I will, uh, you know, I will do it. And uh, my body usually complies, except if we're having an argument or she's yelling at me or something, then, then my body won't comply. But other than that, my body complies. And it's because 
you know, it's funny you asked about the figure modeling earlier. It's because I, I started to train myself in the way of sexually thinking. Because with figure modeling, and I, and I posed in the Louvre in front of 10,000 people nude and in AGO many times in front of several thousands of people many times. And um, one thing you can't get in that situation is aroused. So really? I learned to stop sexual thoughts from coming into my head at the inappropriate times. I sort of see them like little soldiers coming along and I put a drawbridge down on them and, uh, you know, and stop them. So, you know, that's, way, that's the way I look at things. And um, I find that's really effective because I feel like you can't scatter your energy. You can't be focusing your energy on other people. You focus it on the one. You focus, and th you know, this, this is a, a lesson for life in general. You know, if you, if you, obviously, you were putting a lot of effort into being a, a, a host with your own show, and you're doing very well. Oh, thank and you. And usually when you work hard at something, it succeeds. One thing, you can't be scattered. You can't be all over the map. And this also, this really, really applies to, um, it really applies to your love life and the person you're with. You can't be, you can't be, Drinking one wine and, and wanting to drink another wine, like having you can't have two glasses of wine in your mouth at the same time and be able to examine what that wine tastes like. It has to be just one glass at a time, one wine at a time, one person at a time. And yeah. um, at this particular time, I could not even imagine. I am so career focused. I am so driven right now. Like I said, there's murmurs of things and murmurs to me. That's better than nothing. And I would, I would not get bogged down in a um, relationship. Can we can we help who we're attracted to? Can can we really help it? I think we can modify it. And by that I mean not only do we know what we want in life, but we also know what we don't want. And I think that as adults, I mean, maybe when you're 16 years old or 15 years old or 17 years old, you can't really control who you're attracted to. But as an adult, you can say, okay, well, I don't like this quality. Emotionally fun. Okay, you don't get any more emotionally attached um, if the person has different qualities you don't want. So what you do then is you find a quality you do want and choose from that field of people that have the qualities that you do want. So then you know, I think what you don't want to have is a bad relationship, but you want to have a good relationship. But what is a good relationship? It's not a relationship that means that you won't fight, or it does it, or it means that you won't hurt each other, or you, or that means that things won't go wrong. What a good relationship is is a relationship that is like a stone wall; it won't break down. You want to know you have somebody there that will never leave you, no matter what. That that loves you unconditionally. And this is a good relationship. This is a relationship that will stand the, 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 uh, the, the test of time. So I would definitely say avoid a bad relationship, but you, you can see it coming if you're, you know, if you're an adult. You can see it coming. So you go with the things that you find the most important, and they will help Darling, you with Judy, your career. As Judy, well. Garland had be had a better, Judy Garland had more luck in her love life than I did have. My love life uh, has never... But at the same time, you know, people call me a cougar. I've called myself a cougar. But honestly, that's all that asks me out are younger guys. That's all that asks me out are younger guys. And when I say younger, I'm saying 1920. What is that? I won. Well, on you know, it's it, 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 it about me. On what you... Go ahead. Okay. What I'd say I mean, is is you're selling yourself short. What I'd say is you don't have to have like a ton of people asking you out. You have to have the right person asking you out. And I'm the best no one asking you out. Be yourself. Well, you know, I'm sure that will change. I, you've, got a, you've got a huge fan base now. And I see your fans oh. really think they're hot and like you. Maybe they think that you're unattainable or something like that. But, but in general, um, I think you... You, you try to find, like, you don't need, it's the thing about, a, about, about a, a love of your life and all this. You don't need, uh, I don't need a hundred 
thousand or hundred million screaming fans to be the love of my life. I would like them to buy my records or buy my pictures or, um, uh, you know, find some happiness in watching my wife and I's um, only fan stuff. But all I need to be happy is the one. All I need is my wife to love me and I'm happy. Everything else is gravy. Like even career is gravy compared to that, compared to having a really solid relationship. So that's the way I feel. Now, a lot of people don't, don't feel like this. So, you know, it is whatever it is for you. But about what we could advise people on is just how to make something really good and how to keep it good, you know, make your relationship great again. And she, here she is. Well, when it comes to a man or a woman who, you know, wants to be with somebody that's a lot younger than them, <laughs> uh, it's probably because they want to prove that they can get someone much younger than them. And then once they get that younger person, they prove that, yeah, I can still attract a, a really younger person, whatever. They did that, been there, done that. And then, you know, they can move on to uh, someone that's closer to their age because it's been proven that it's more stressful to be in, an, in a relationship that has a great deal of disparity when it comes to income or, or um, age, like huge disparate, huge, huge big gaps and and that makes it more difficult. So most successful relationships are close in age, closer to in age. You have more to talk about. You have more, you have a, you know, kind of like a shared history, cultural um, references and stuff. So I look at relationships that have been very successful and, you know, famous people that we could, you know, mention, they kind of are closer in age, but you, people go through phases. So, you know, maybe someone's going through a phase where they were just came, come out of a, a really bad, long relationship and they just want to sow their wild oats again and pretend that they're teenagers again, they can do that. But eventually that'll pass. And then again, they will seek something um, more serious. It's cyclical. It's very much a cycle. Like I was and, asking him, can we help who we're attracted to? Can we really? Well, we can be logical with ourselves. If we're attracted to a type that is not really working out in our favor, that is just right. not good for us, it's the same destructive type. Yes. Then what we can do is make a list of, okay, this is the type of person I'm attracted to this, 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 and that quality. And then you can make a list. Uh, what's bad about this type that I'm attracted to? What, what causes me pain and grief? So we need to read that list when we find ourselves being attracted again to the same destructive type. It can be very and, scary uh, because I, scary. I, I have a history of being with bad boys. Like if you want to be with Hillary, you got to have a felony. And I'm so past that now. And the great thing about aging is the wisdom that I can spot a bullshitter 10,000 miles away. I am very curious to know what advice, what words would you give to a man who is having all this guilt and doesn't know how to handle the fact that he is attracted to trans women? Well, uh, guilt doesn't change anything. And uh, I would say that the world is different than it was 10, you know, 10, 15 years ago, five years ago, even the world is really, really, really different. People are a lot more tolerant and um, they don't have to go according to anyone else's program. We have one life here on this planet and we have to live honestly with ourselves first. So we have to be honest mm -hmm. with ourselves. And if we are attracted to this, whatever it is, and this is what makes us most happy, then that's the path that we have to follow, even if society in general uh, does, doesn't approve. And you might have to change societies. You might have to go to another place. You might have to go to a bigger mm -hmm. town, a more sophisticated society. Why torture yourself and try to change yourself? Just be you. That's true. That's my that's best true. advice. And, you know, there's only one you. There's only one, one of us in, in 8 billion people. And out there is someone that's perfect for us. And it will come when you least expect it. That's true. Thank you. She's not just a pretty face. Very smart. Granada. That's why I wanted her opinion so bad. Yes. So yeah, I'm going to put the link to your OnlyFans. I thank you for your time. Um, 
Good luck with the OnlyFans. I'm going to promote it on my Twitter, promote it on my Facebook, and, you know, put it on my YouTube because this will be on YouTube later this evening. So thank you so much, Paris. This was fun. We'll get together again soon. It was wonderful meeting your beautiful wife. You guys are so smart, and I'm really busy now. I have to go because there's an OnlyFans I have to go subscribe to. Yours. Okay, great. Thank you. Mwah.